What's up guys, Mark back here with yet another video and on today's show I want to introduce you guys to a really, really amazing piece of software. Most of you all know that I don't really like Adobe or their uh, pay to play model. I, I hate the subscription service, I absolutely can't stand it. Um, but I constantly look for new and interesting pieces of software that I can edit my photographs in and not have to have that real heavy, bulky Adobe code on my computer, right? So I found one and I figured I would show it with you guys today. So if you guys are ready, let's take a look. So this is Photo Lemur, uh, extremely simple, easy to use interface. Nothing wild, nothing crazy here, right? I mean, it is basically just load a photo up and let it do its thing. You don't have to be a photograph uh, editing wizard in order to get great results. Now, this is not going to probably appeal to some of those hardcore uh, photograph editing guys. I mean, this is not that kind of program. This is for someone that has taken some great shots and they just want to give it that little extra oomph. So, I'm going to start off with a couple of photographs that I took. And we're just going to start off with the basic settings here. Um, this is a photograph of a horse, and hang on, I want to make sure that this is centered up so that we can get a before and after. And it allows you to look at it in before and after. So this is on, as you can see down here, directly 50% between realistic and vivid. So this was the original photograph, and this is with it just on its base setting of 50%. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and scale this back because really the horse is the focus of this photograph. And as you can see, lots and lots of detail, lots of light enhancements. Um, but now let's go ahead and crank it all the way over here to realistic. It does its thing. It calculates pixel by pixel. And then look at how dramatic that is. And you don't really have to do anything. And it doesn't like... It doesn't honestly make your photograph look uh, weird, in my opinion. It doesn't have sort of like, um, uh, it doesn't have that HDR feeling where it almost kind of seems like it's in a dream state or something. It just really does a, a fantastic job of enhancing details. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looked like before. I mean, it's still a good photo, but that really gives it that extra pop that you want it. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here to Vivid. And let's make sure that it stays on the before. Now it's done processing. Let's see what she looks like with Vivid. Very nice. I like it. I mean, I think it does a fantastic job. I mean, you could have easily done this. Um, I wouldn't say easily, but you could have done this uh, in another photo editing app and you would have gotten similar results, but not at the click of a button. So I really do want to give props to PhotoLemur for, um, you know, basically making, uh, taking the, the complication out of editing your photographs. All right, so let's take a look at another photograph. Here's another one. Okay, so now we've got pretty deep contrast. We've got some dark down here. And we've got some bright sky. Now, this is the before. And as you can see, there's a, a, a large dynamic range here between the sky and the darker areas uh, in the horse's tail, in the horse's eyes. Uh, now, this is at 50%. I mean, just look at her face, how that clears up. Look at the detail in the jeans and in that saddle. I mean, it looks pretty daggone good, right? So let's look at it before. And then after. And that's just at 50%. So if you wanted to kind of find a nice balance between vivid and realistic, just leave it there. But if you wanted to give it a little extra, I really like this particular photograph in realistic. 100% realistic. I mean, wow. I mean, he looks so good. All right, let's go back. This is the original. And look at those details start to pop out of the, the with where the horse's fur is at. Look at all of those details that were completely hidden. I mean, that is just amazing. Really, really love this app. Okay, now let's go ahead and check it out on Vivid. 
Very nice. Now, it gave it a little bit of, uh, more of a softer effect, so it's not as poppy and detail-y, so uh, some of the smaller details are not as visible, but it's still an extremely nice uh, overall look. Definitely brings out the colors, gets rid of the, the funkiness, the gray, and really brings out all those uh, uh, really pretty colors. I mean, they're, you know, that sort of turquoise um, shirt and all the really pretty uh, browns in the saddle, all those details in the horse's fur, and even really kind of uh, helped out the sky, uh, give it that uh, extra blue pop around those white clouds. Really, really nice in my opinion. Okay, so let's check out another couple of photographs here. All right, now this is extreme dynamic range because the horse is a very, very dark color. Your clouds are extremely white, and you've got the nice deep blue. Oh, so much better right out of the gate, and that's at 50%. So let's look at it before. And then after. Before. After. I mean, that is a huge, huge difference just at 50%. All right, let's crank this all the way to realistic, see what we get. And like I said, you don't have to go all the way realistic or all the way vivid. You can do it in any uh, amount in between. So that really, really did a job on this photograph. Look at that. All of that detail, all of those light highlights here in the dark area on the horse's neck, I mean, just completely come to life. Really brings out those skin tones. Brings out all the details in her shirt. Just take a look at this once it gets done processing. This is at 100%. I mean, that is just crazy how good that looks. Before and after. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I got a couple more that I want to show you real quick, and the first one I want to do is, this is actually from uh, an indoor scene, and I know that a lot of people kind of have problems with uh, the indoor scenes. Some of these uh, apps don't really do very good with artificial light, and I've noticed that because I've tried them uh, several times myself. Uh, this is just a, a photograph of my uh, niece and my two nephews, and... But now let's go all the way to realistic. So this is the that that was this is fifty percent. See, indoors it kind of messes with you know the hair because all of this is artificial light. It this computer this machine learning uh, that they've got integrated into this app it really does do a good job overall but you do have to be careful when you're using indoor lighting situations so for indoor lighting situations my personal recommendation would just be to leave it at about 50 percent because it really does strike the perfect balance between enhancing that photo but not making it look too crazy right so this was before and this is at 50 percent it just does all the right things in all the right places without going too crazy at 50%. Um, there was one other one that I was wanting to show you, and that one was uh, a photograph taken with uh, a cell phone. Now, I know that a lot of people love to take uh, photographs with their cell phones and stuff now. I am no exception. My grandmother had her 80th birthday the other day, and we got her some little cupcakes and stuff. So again, uh, let's go to the before and this is all indoors with an iPhone 7S or a 7 Plus. So this is before, this is at 50%, and that's after. Not a huge change, but it does add just that little bit of something extra. Um, again, because it's indoor lighting, if I go like all the way to realistic, it starts to do weird things. And if you can see back here, it really starts to enhance things that if you were editing it by hand, you would not want to enhance you know, the grain or the, the smudginess uh, that the, uh, the software tries to apply uh, in camera. But overall, a decent uh, improvement with some indoor photos. But again, with the indoor photographs, whether you're taking them with a good camera or your uh, cell phone, I just tend to leave it on 50% if I just want an overall good edit. So there you guys have it. There you go. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, don't forget to like it subscribe, and also share it on the interwebs. I'm your host, Mark Puck, and I will see you guys again on the next one. Peace out.